Welcome back to Talk the Walk. With me now is Chief Executive Carrie Lim, who joins us today for a discussion. Ma Madam Chief Executive, thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. Now let's mm -hmm. talk about the legislative election. Um, the number of directly elected lawmakers will decrease from 35 to 20. Um, are you concerned that the shrinking Democratic mandates in the legislature will tarnish the legitimacy of your governance? No, it's quite the opposite. The legitimacy of uh, legislative council and hence the um, uh, possibility of an executive-led government mm. will be enhanced by this system of improvements to the electoral system because uh, the composition of a legislative council has been increased from 70 to 90, which is quite a big step. Uh, last time is from 60 to 70. Secondly, is now we have a much more broadly representative legislative council, uh, increasing from the two sectors, which is uh, functional constituencies and uh, geographical constituencies, to a three-sector approach that is functional, geographical, and the electoral uh, college. So what would that achieve? That will mean that we will be able to reduce or mitigate this polarization or this uh, huge divisiveness in the Legislative Council, each representing their sectoral interests. Mm. Uh, by design, the 40 members to be returned by the election committee should represent the overall interests of Hong Kong because they, they are not voted in by a district uh, or by popular vote, which sometimes makes them a little bit populist uh, because the voters are so very important. They are not voted in by their respective uh, industry or professions. So they can really take Hong Kong's overall interest uh, into account in looking at the government policies. So I, I really feel that uh, that is um, a more healthy uh, legislature that will be able to work uh, with the executive and to monitor uh, the executive with a view to improving governance. Now, okay, let's turn to the election committee. Um, as we know that you are the chair of, the, of Hong Kong's National Security Committee, which will assess the qualification of election candidates. Will the chief executive's recommendation or opinion outweigh the others, um, outweigh those of other committee members in the screening process? No, at the end of the day, it's uh, based on facts. Mm -hmm. It's a view of uh, the committee uh, based on facts. Uh, the facts will be provided by a very professional department called uh, the Hong Kong Police Force. Uh, their national security department will uh, look at the facts, uh, produce the facts, present them to the National Security Committee. And uh, the committee is uh, quite a big one uh, with uh, um, several number of uh, officials, uh, including the three secretaries, um, and they will form a collective uh, uh, opinion. Uh, and then uh, they will present this opinion to the candidate eligibility review committee uh, that will make the final decision. And uh, I'm telling you that the chief executive is not going to be a member or a chairman of the candidate eligibility review committee. It will consist of uh, several principal officials. Is it fair to say that every candidate will need approval of the National Security Unit in the police department? I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't understand your question, sorry. So you said the um, National Security yeah. Department in the police force yeah. will assess, will provide their assessment of the qualification of candidates. Is that correct? No, they will do the fact finding. So they wouldn't be they, they won't form a view. They, they are doing okay. the fact finding. They will present the facts, uh, whether the, this individual has certain uh, track record, whether they have been uh, involved in collusion and so on. It's mm. just like investigation into a suspected crime. Okay. They will do the fact finding. They will present the findings. They wouldn't to the give committee. a conclusion. They won't. No. Who, uh, who police have been doing a lot of integrity check for me. Uh, when, whenever I appoint key positions, I need an integrity check from the police department. And they've been doing the, the vetting and they don't form a view, uh, but right. I will consider the so facts and like form a view. Yeah, background yeah. track checks yeah. for every candidate. Not every candidate, it would be mm. an impossible job. Right. Uh, because not every candidate uh, will need a national security check. Who will? Those who are, who the, uh, 
Candidate Eligibility Review Committee has suspicions. Because you imagine, we are not just talking about a chief executive election. Yes. Uh, we are not just talking about 90 seats to be contested. Yes. We are talking about an election committee, 1,500 mm -hmm. members, yeah. who also have to be uh, approved by the uh, Candidate Eligibility Review Committee. So it's not, it's not possible to put all these people through a national security check. Uh, so it is only in uh, situations, circumstances, which um, the committee feels that they need um, some further information. That, again, is an e existing mechanism. Now we have a returning officer, which is normally a middle-ranking senior, a middle-ranking civil servant, who decides whether qualify, whether candidates qualify or not qualify. And in the past, they have DQ, a few. Uh, they don't do it for everyone, but when needed, mm. they will go to legal department for some advice, how to interpret, and so on and so on. So it's a, it's, a, it's a common mechanism. All right, Madam Chief Executive, yeah. you have denounced a small number of extremists for sowing chaos in Hong Kong. Um, why not try to resolve and address the root cause of the social grievance, um, such as um, fruitless calls for democracy, increasing mainland influence, instead of the result of those grievances, such as protests, in the streets and protests in the legislature? No, the fundamental uh, problems uh, in Hong Kong that has given rise to the, um, the chaos we have seen in recent years and the social unrest is because the system to fully and accurately implement one country's two systems have not been adequately established. And that's why mm. uh, you could have people advocate independence, you could have all these uh, riots on the streets, you could have uh, politicians going out to, uh, to ask uh, overseas governments and politicians to sanction Hong Kong, and you could have people who gang together say that let's destroy Hong Kong. As long as we took over the Legislative Council, we will veto everything, and then force the CE to resign, and then the central governments who come in, and, and so on. These are the these major deficiencies in our system. Unless we address these major deficiencies and get them back onto mm. the right track, we have no capacity to deal with the other economic and social problems. So I said that this improved system of electoral arrangements will give us from now on, after the legislation has been passed, a very solid basis to perform and deliver for the people of Hong Kong. Are you afraid these electoral changes, electoral reforms, will further alienate the moderate factions in the Hong Kong society? That's why we need to explain. Soon after the NBCFC uh, has approved the um, amended annexes, um, I myself and my principal officials and even my uh, senior civil servants uh, have gone all out to explain uh, why we need this set of improvements so that people understand. But uh, I would confess that we are not very good in articulation uh, in the past. Uh, we are not very effective in dissemination of the positive messages. And we have given too many opportunities for the opposition, sometimes very radical opposition, particularly using the social media, to discredit the government, to discredit um, China, and also to spread all sorts of fake news and misinformation. But uh, I, I can promise you that uh, my government will try to improve on all these aspects and make sure that people understand why, right. at this juncture, this system needs to be improved. Right, so you don't think you have a policy issue, but a communication issue. Is that correct? Well, there, depending on what uh, subject you are talking about, there are policy areas that we do have policy issues, like housing. Uh, we have a policy issue in housing by uh, not providing uh, enough land uh, because of the land production process. Those are policy issues that we need to tackle once we have resolved the political structure system. Now, you are Hong Kong's first female chief executive, and you've said you have Beijing's full support. You're in a unique position to make a difference, but is implementing the most drastic changes to Hong Kong's electoral system since the handover what you want as part of your legacy? Uh, I, I, I do need to talk about legacy. Uh, my mission in life is to serve. 
serve the country, serve Hong Kong, and serve the people of Hong Kong. And for Hong Kong to continue to succeed under one country, two systems, uh, what we have done with the support of the uh, Central People's Government, the national security law, and these improvements to the electoral system are absolutely necessary. And to have been personally involved and steered both exercises, I feel very gratified. Okay, Chief Executive, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. And for those who are watching, I'll see you next week right here on Talk the Walk. Stay with us.